Hey, what's up everyone? In this video, I'm going to show you how I add on to my existing warehouse structure here, my HO scale switching layout. And this is a kit made by ITLA uh, scale models up in Canada. Um, I say it's a kit, but it's actually a bunch of wall module kits. Um, this is not a particular structure kit you can purchase from them, but you can get a bunch of different separate wall modules and make your own. So that's what I did with this here, and it was really fun. It's a great kit. I'm really happy with it, um, but I want to extend it out a little bit. Now I have some leftover wall modules that I ordered that were parts of like um, like bundle packs that you can get of various uh, wall modules. I have some leftover. I'm going to extend it out, but I still needed four more uh, to build the structure out the way I wanted to. And so those just recently came in the mail, and so I'm now ready to get started. Let's get to it. All right, so before we get started here, I'm going to show you how I mocked up the rest of this building. Now, you can go to itlascalemodels.com. You can print out some templates of each of the wall modules, print them out, cut them up, and you can place them however you want and figure out what the shape of the building um, most pleases you, I guess. So I wanted to fill this out a little bit more. I had some left over. I printed out those particular templates, and um, what I came up with was this here. So this is the extension to the building. Uh, I've got a garage door here, big concrete wall, and that's going to sit right there. Um, this is just foam core board that I got from a dollar store. I printed these out, um, pasted them on that, and just kind of configured it, kept configuring it until I, I liked what I saw. And I think this works well. There's going to be another building over here, an alleyway, uh, like a covered bridge walkway between the buildings. Um, and so now I'm ready to actually put this thing together because now I have basically the exact dimensions of the extension here and then I can figure out the rest over here. So let's head over to the workbench and start uh, figuring out how to put this thing together. Okay, to get started here I've laid out everything that I believe I will need kit-wise uh, to build what this mock-up represents. So I've got a bunch of different types of wall modules here. I've got ones with some brick inserts and some window inserts, which is this here. I've got four of these. This is what I just received in the mail. And I have some leftovers that I'll be combining to do the rest of these. So I've got some concrete wall modules. I've got ones with uh, garage doors on the bottom, ones that are all brick. And so those are all laid out here. Uh, also, I've got some, you know, this one represents the one with the garage door, so I've got to paint up the garage door as well. I've got some leftover brick inserts here that I'll be using as reference, so when I, I make sure I paint these the same way so they all look uh, consistent. I also have some extra window frames from the last bill as well. I don't have enough painted currently to complete this. I've got six here. I need four more. So I've got another one of these inserts from the previous build. I'll end up painting these up here. If you take a look, there's a lot of like rectangular inserts in the windows. You can paint those to look like different colored glass or to look like plywood, like if it's been um, boarded up or something like that. Uh, I'm gonna pop those out and I'm gonna do something a little different that I think looks a little bit more realistic. So um, yes, yeah, show you that later. Also, I have a bunch of pre-painted concrete pilasters from the last build. I believe I have enough to complete this. We'll see. If not, I could, there's more in these here, so uh, I'll be able to finish it no matter what, but I think I have all of them that I need. There's also some extra wall details here that I have left over. Some vents, um, some junction boxes, uh, things like that. Uh, I've also got an extra ladder here that I think I'm going to tack on to the other building as well as part of this process. Some glass inserts. And so, yeah, so basically I have everything I need. Um, I also have this basswood here, these basswood strips. It's a sixteenth of an inch thick by a half inch wide. And when you join these two modules up, um, I like to put a reinforcement behind each of these joints where they, where they made up. Um, just to help stiffen the building, make sure it's nice and rigid. So if I'm moving it on and off the layout for whatever reason, if I need to fix something or add something to it or finish working on it, uh, so to speak. Uh, I'm not actually like, I'm not gonna be worried that it's gonna come apart. So I just wanna reinforce those joints and I'll show you that as we go along. The other thing that we're going to do is eventually I plan on lighting this building. 
So you're going to see as we go along here, um, there's spaces uh, between like the, the brick inserts and the wall and the glass inserts and things like that. Um, a little bit of light leaking can happen, so I'm going to show you how I take care of that and some other various things. So uh, with that, I just need to open these up and then um, get these ready for painting. Uh, they may be thinking, well, do I need to prep them first? Uh, well, if you follow the instructions, which is basically what I'm doing, uh, you start out by laying everything out and then basically painting it first. Uh, it's a lot easier to do it that way um, when they're still in their carrier sheets, as uh, ITLA likes to call them. And it's a lot easier to paint these that way than it is to pop everything out, um, have them you know, all over the place, and then try to paint each one individually. It makes the process a lot faster, and there's really not a lot of touch-up you have to do afterwards uh, once you paint them. So we'll get into that. For now, I'm gonna open these up and we'll get started. Okay, as you can see here, I have the wall modules taped down to this piece of cardboard, uh, ready to be painted up. Uh, <laughs> you could probably tell I used this cardboard the last time I did the other part of the warehouse structure. And I left the wall modules inside of the carrier sheets. I didn't pop them out, uh, partly because it's easier just to do this real quick. And the other reason is um, when I pop these out, I'll have uh, joints that are basically non-painted, which is good because I'll be using wood glue and you'll get a stronger bond between two pieces of wood than you would have between two pieces of painted wood. And so I'll have a stronger bond between each wall module, so that'll be good. And then afterwards, I'll take this bass wood and then I'll reinforce the, the joints on the other side uh, once they're all painted up. So, uh, yeah, so all I have to do is just go paint this thing up and uh, should be good to go. I'm going to be using a kind of like an aged concrete color. This is uh, Matte Sand Dollar by Krylon. Um, pretty cheap stuff, but it looks pretty good and it uh, has a nice finish to it. So I was pretty happy the last time I used it, so I'm going to continue that with that particular paint. And uh, yeah, so I'll just take this outside, get it painted up, and uh, we'll be right back. Alright, so I'm going to prep these windows here for paint. Uh, get them painted black like the like the other window frames that I've got. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to pop out these rectangular inserts here. Uh, now you could paint these to look like different colored panes of glass. You just got to be really careful when you do this. Uh, they are very delicate. Uh, I'm not going to paint these things. Instead, what I'm going to do is these come with these plastic sheets they can use for the panes of glass. So you'll glue this behind here. And instead of painting these, I'm going to use these uh, washable Crayola markers to color in the different panes. Um, so it ends up looking pretty realistic that way. You do have to be careful with these washable ones because if you, uh, if you, you can rub it away pretty quick. Uh, but the, the upside to that is if you don't like how it came out, you can also just rub it away and try again. Um, but once you like it, uh, let it set and try not to touch those those glass panes uh, again after that. So I'm going to go ahead and start popping the rest of these out and then um, we'll get this ready to be painted up. Okay, so I hit this up with the black there. Pretty easy peasy. Uh, so that's basically done. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint up some of these brick inserts. I'm going to use a few different colors. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down a little bit of this flat black again. That's going to give a subtle shadow to the uh, uh, kind of the undertones to this. Next, I'm going to hit it with uh, red oxide primer by Krylon. It's just a nice flat bricky type of red and this is going to be the main color so I'm going to hit pretty much everything there. Uh, in the spots where I hit it with the shadow uh, dark black color um, I'll go a little bit lighter just to get some of that through but overall this is going to be the main color. And then finally for some subtle highlights this is just a slightly brighter, uh, brighter uh, red color. And this is called Interrail Brown by 94. It's a low pressure spray paint, so you gotta get a little bit closer. It doesn't come out as harsh or not as fast. And um, has a kind of a sweet smell to it when it dries. It's kind of nice. Uh, but it'll give a little bit of a subtle highlight in certain areas. I'm not gonna hit it all over the place, just a little bit here and there. And that gives a nice random appearance. So the other thing that I forgot to mention earlier is that after each one of these steps, I do hit everything with this clear finish matte spray by Krylon. It's uh, basically a latex, but it takes 
uh, acrylics really well. It takes oils really well. Um, it does a really nice sealing job to it. It kind of preserves the colors really nice. And so this is what I use basically for sealing all my stuff. Um, you can use like a dull coat or something if you want, but I feel that like this does a really good job. It doesn't atomize as fine as like Tester's dull coat, but it does a pretty good job. Um, it's not really thick. It goes on pretty light and um, for the amount you get in this can, I think this is like six or seven dollars. Um, it goes a really long way too. So, and I, I find that it does an equally good job even on my um, on my plastic models. So that's what I use. Uh, use what you like, but I'm pretty sold on it. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna go out. I'm gonna spray these, and then we'll come back. Okay, so now that the basic red brick color is done and sealed, I'm gonna add a little bit more color variation by just using some different red and orange acrylic paints, going to kind of just mix them up and then I'll sponge it on in various places just for some variation. So we'll do that next. Okay, so just mixed up a little bit of a mess here of color and all I'm going to do is just take this sponge and dip it in here and I'm just going to test it next to it just to make sure I like the color. Uh, maybe a little darker. I don't want it to be too too stark of a contrast. That's kind of nice right there. So I'm just going to dab that around just really lightly. And then, um, yeah, we'll see how it comes out. Okay, so now that the acrylic paint has dried, I got this nice random color variation going on. And next I'm gonna add some mortar lines. And for that, I basically used ITLA's suggestion right off their site. Um, what you do is you take some plaster. I just have this lightweight hydrocal laying around. And I just put some in a cup, take a brush, dip it into the plaster, and you kind of tap over top of the areas where you want that mortar to be. And you just rub it in there. Any excess you can wipe away start over again if you need to um, with either just a damp cloth or an alcohol wipe or something like that. Uh, I would recommend if you're going to use like an alcohol wipe, seal it first. I did not seal this because I'm, I don't really wipe it away. I just kind of rub it in and blow it off real quick uh, just to keep it random. Kind of look I'm going for. Here's a piece that I had done from the previous build. I don't know if you could see that. Uh, but it's, I just keep it really random just for some visual interest. And so that's what we'll be doing next. And after that, these brick inserts will basically be done. Okay, so the next thing to get painted up is going to be this garage door for one of the wall modules. And as you can see, if I tilt it like this, you can see these separation lines where the panels are um, separated on the garage door. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill these in. And I'm going to use this high flow acrylic paint by Golden. Works really nice. All I have to do is wet the tip of a really fine brush and then dip it in some of this. and event oh, focus here <laughs> and then what I'll do is I'll trace each one of these lines and these little joints here and fill them in uh, get it nice and black um, I don't have to worry about being exact because the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to hit it with this Krylon primer this gray primer and I'm going to hit it at an angle like this and so that'll prevent a lot of the paint from going down into these separation lines. So it'll leave a lot of the black still there. I'm not worried about if it's perfect or not, because uh, afterwards I'm going to hit it up with some weathering powders for some dirt and some rust and stuff like that. It came out pretty good the last time I did it, so I think I'll do it again. I'm not going to vary it up too much. Uh, I want everything to look at least somewhat consistent. So start filling in those lines, and then uh, we'll get to it.
All right, so as you can see, I got finished painting up all the uh, panel lines here. And I'm just going to let this dry, and then I'll take it outside, give it a spritz of the primer. Now, I'm using the primer because it's a gray, um, it's going to be a gray door. So I figured, why not just use a gray primer? That's what I got laying around, and it seems to work well. So um, one thing to note, this is really, really thin MDF. So you don't want to go too heavy with any water or alcohol-based stuff because it really would um, kind of warp the wood. So you really have to do, be careful there. Um, just as a heads up, I ruined a couple pieces, so trust me, <laughs> know all about it. All right, so I'm going to take this outside, give it a spritz at an angle, and we'll see what, uh, what we come back with. All right, so I finished spraying it with the primer, and as you can see, the panel separation line stayed dark, and the rest of it has this nice gray metal type color. So the next thing I'm going to do is get some weathering powders and start making this look a little grungier. Okay, there's one more step to this particular door. Now you can do this if you want or not, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this leftover um, glass panes from the wall modules, and I'm going to glue a sheet, uh, a strip of it, behind these per uh, windows on the garage door. So just to give it that appearance that there is glass there. Again, um, attention to detail if you if you want it. So all I'm going to do is take this here. Clip this. And figure out the approximate right about there. It's pretty easy to mark this stuff too. Uh, it's very, very fragile. Oh, where's my mark? There it is. All right. And then snap this piece off. All right, so now all I have to do is glue that in place, grab my canopy glue. I have to be too exact for this one. Um, all right, so we'll just a little dab. Come on, there we go. Just like that. Let it fall into place. And there we go. All I have to do is wait for that to be uh, for the glue to set, and this piece is ready to be popped out and glued onto the wall module. All right, so it's a little bit more work on these pilasters to do. Um, I already sprayed them, but when I sprayed them, they were in these carrier sheets. So when you pop them out, the one thing that becomes really apparent when you hold them all together like this and you look to the side, the edges are still the same color as the uh, MDF. So when you put these on the wall modules, and I made this mistake the last time, uh, these edges are going to be really apparent, especially when you have a, a light concrete color and this dark MDF color. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dip it in some acrylic paint that I'm going to mix up, hold all these together, and just kind of lightly brush these um, all in one go. That way I don't have to like take it outside and make sure I spray the edges and everything, uh, because you do run the risk of filling in these joint lines. Let's zoom in here. Yeah, these joint lines match up with the concrete on the wall module. So you want to make sure you don't fill those in, otherwise it kind of um, loses its uh, you know, cohesiveness or its uh, uniformity there. So anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mix up some paint, paint those edges, and then I'm just going to take some of this acrylic paint that I have here. I used this about 75% to 25% uh, titanium to raw umber. And I got the color that I was looking for. Obviously, um, you would want to match the color that you're looking for as well. Or take them out of the carrier sheets and spray them all at once and um, don't do what I did. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to mix up some paint, get these painted up, and then we'll be on to the next step. All right, so now it's time to start popping these out of the carrier sheets. Uh, pretty easy. Just got to be careful. Um, some of these are pretty delicate. So all you do is you just kind of just wiggle it back and forth, and you can audibly hear it kind of pop as you're going around. You'll feel it too. Um, yeah, pretty simple. That side's a little stubborn. Just gotta take your time. Don't don't force it because it, uh, it's pretty thin MDF so you don't want to crack it. There we go, and there we go, and then just on 
and on and on. So I'm gonna finish popping these out and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so now that I've got all these popped out of the carrier sheets, uh, start. I can start to work on figuring out where all the pieces are gonna go. I mean, I already know where they're gonna be gonna go because of the mock, but as you can see, you can kind of just snugly fit them together. And then once you take these pilasters and place those on top like that, glue it all together, start to look like a concrete wall. So pretty cool kits, um, very nicely done. The other thing that I do is I keep these carrier sheets around. They're very useful. In fact, especially the ones with the right angles here, um, I use those to reinforce the uh, structure later on in the build process. So uh, don't toss them away. They're very useful. Hold on to them. Um, and then, yeah, so the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to start um, laying out the pieces to, you know, the structure of the way it's going to be built up just to make sure everything kind of fits, make sure I don't need to sand anything or anything like that. And then after that, we're going to start adding our inserts, whether they're windows or uh, brick inserts as well there. So uh, that's coming up next. Um, let's get to it. All right, so we've got the structure kind of snugly fit together here. Now there's no glue. I've not glued anything together yet. Um, everything's just kind of snapped together. Um, it holds pretty good. Obviously um, not enough to, to stay up on the layout, but yeah, so this is really nice to be able to make sure everything matches up with the mock. And this is where the power of the mock really shines because as you can see, this is basically exact other than of course, this is just foam core and paper and this is the kit itself, but the dimensions are basically the same. I mean, you print these out at 100% um, scale value and you get this. So it's really nice to be able to print these out, you know, mock this up like this, put it on the layout, see what you like, make sure it fits, uh, make sure there's enough room around it, make sure everything looks the way you want it to before you actually order the parts and then put the kit together. So this is essentially the building you will be creating quite literally, right? So everything's going to match up. Um, now, I have noticed that because I'm using foam core, and I'm not being totally exact that, you know, it's, it's off by maybe a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch in certain places, but that's just because of the thickness of the foam. Um, other than that, if I were just to use just the paper and somehow reinforce it so it stood on its own without some sort of, you know, thick backing, then this would be the dimensions I would get. So really nice uh, setup that ITLA has with this stuff. It really makes this whole build process go really smooth and you can order exactly what you need and you won't be overspending basically. So uh, now that I know everything fits together, I didn't need to sand anything so that was good. Um, last time I did have to sand a couple pieces. Uh, this time everything worked out pretty nice. So next I'm going to start working on some of the inserts and I think I'm going to start with the windows first. Um, I started with the brick inserts last time, and I noticed I had to adjust some of the window inserts just a little bit, uh, probably because the brick inserts were pushing these little um, pieces out just slightly. So I want to do the windows first, so I don't have to do too much uh, prep work there. And then, yeah, so we'll get on to that part next. Okay, so next up, the windows. So what you do is you basically pop these out of these carrier sheets here. And what you're left with are these uh, window frames. Now the instructions say that if you're going to be opening these little um, window sashes to cut these out and then glue them in later. I don't do that. I, what I do is, just because I don't want to cut them out and try to fiddle with them, gluing them back in, for the windows that I want these sashes to be open, I just gently, let's zoom in here, focus, um, I just gently move it just a little bit just to get some uh, make it appear that it's opened just enough just like that and I leave it like that and what I'll do is I'll just take a little dab of glue and I'll just glue these points right here uh, just so that you know um, it doesn't fall out because it is very very thin um, it's basically just being held in place by these tiny little slivers of MDF. So um, that's what I do, and I find that it works well. I don't have to sit there and fiddle with gluing it back in if I don't want to. So for now, for the during the gluing, or I'm sorry, the setting process here, I'm just gonna put it back to straight. And then I'm gonna make sure that these fit inside of here. 
Um, what you can do is just pop them in, just like that. Make sure they fit. They're pretty snug. Um, I found that I do have to sand some of these once in a while, depending. Um, this one, I don't know, I might need to. We'll see. It's kind of giving me a little issue. Let me try it this way. You don't want to fiddle with it too much because, like I said, they are very thin and pretty delicate. This one I might need to sand a little bit because it's bowing. You can kind of see right there. I don't know if you could see that, but you can see it's kind of curving. Um, I'll have to sand these edges a little bit. So for that one, and then for this one, we'll see how this one turns out. Let's start from the back again. Yeah, this one's going to have to be a little bit of more sanding as well. But that's okay. Um, eh, this one's not too bad. This one's not too bad. Just a little bit. So I'll, I'll show you how I sand these down um, in just a second. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I just have a piece of wood that I glued some sandpaper to. I think this is 220 grit. And then... Uh, we're just going to sand these edges down a little bit so that they fit inside of these frames here. So this one, I believe, was a little bit too long because it was kind of bowing. Yeah, just a little bit too long. So I'm just going to take very carefully because um, these are very, very thin, very delicate. And you just want to go back and forth just a little bit just to shave off some of that some of that length. I'll do it on both sides. Just like that. And then we'll we'll test it out. It's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty snug. There we go. Perfect. All right, so I'm going to do the rest to all the other ones and then get all these prepped up and ready to be glued. Once I'm happy with it, I'll add a little bit of glue. And the other thing that I mentioned earlier with opening the sashes is I wait until these are all glued in before I start opening those sashes. Because if you do it uh, prior to putting them in, um, you're going to have the sash kind of protruding out. And as you're working on it, um, you don't want to accidentally snap that thing out um, because it's it's almost flush with the back of this here. So if you set this down like this, you're going to hit the sash and it could pop out. So just be careful of that. Luckily, I haven't had that uh, happen to me uh, before, so hopefully it won't happen in this build, but I guess we'll find out. So I'm going to go prep the rest of these uh, window frames, and then uh, we'll get back to the next step. Okay, so now that I have all the window frame inserts put into the mo wall modules that will have windows. Um, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take some canopy glue here and I'm just going to add little dabs of glue along the corners of each one of these windows just to hold them in place. So um, now f when I do the, the joints between the wall modules, I'm going to end up using wood glue for that. But um, since the windows are going to be, you know, you can see through the window. So um, I would want something that would dry clear, just in case I make a little boo-boo. Um, but So this stuff works great for that. Also, I picked this up as a tip from um, Rob Bennett over on his channel. And uh, he used canopy glue pretty much for the whole thing, I think. Um, and it seemed to hold up for him, but um, I don't know. That kind of scares me. So <laughs> uh, I use wood glue for all the major joints, um, simply because I have tons of wood glue around because I do woodworking. Um, but this stuff works great for the windows and so or any place that has any sort of clear glass like um, Kind of structure to it. So that's what I'll be using for this. And I'm just gonna empty a little bit of this into my messy plate here and then take Take a toothpick dip it in the glue and just kind of dab it along each area So I don't get you know gobs of glue on there. So I'm gonna go all these up and then I'll um, we'll be right back Okay, so now on to the brick inserts. So when you're inserting these into the wall modules that are gonna have brick inserts, 
uh, depending on how you want that brick to look is uh, depending on which side you want to push it into. So if you want the brick to be protruding outward, uh, you'd want to push it in onto the front, the, you know, the front being the, uh, the side that's, that's painted. But if you want them recessed a little bit, uh, push them in in the back, and I'll show you I'll show you um, what I mean by that. So I want my brick to be recessed in a little bit. So I'm going to take this, like this, take a brick insert, pop it in there. It's a little snug. Yeah, hold on. They are snug. Don't have to worry about them falling out easily. That's for sure. There we go. So. By pushing it into the back first, let's see if this will focus. Um, I'm not pushing it all the way flush with the front of the wall module, which means I'll have a little bit of a lip, probably a sixteenth of an inch here, so that it looks recessed. So depending on how you want your brickwork to look, uh, depends on which side you want to push it into, and um, or if you want it completely flush, just you know push it in so it's completely flush. Uh, flush on the front or the back, however you want to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to insert all these bricks into all the sheets that are going to accept them, and then I'll show you what that looks like afterwards. Okay, so now that I've got the brick inserts snapped into place, what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these on the back uh, just to make sure that they don't pop out. Um, they're in there pretty snug, but you want to make sure that they are secured. I'm just going to be using some tight bond wood glue. Nothing too crazy. I'm just going to take my messy plate here, put a little dab of glue, a trusty toothpick, and just go along and just kind of glue in the edges here. Don't have to be too precise or anything, just to make sure that the corners receive some glue. They're not going to pop out on you later on. So I'm going to finish up gluing this up and then um, Move on to the next step. Okay, so now that I have all of the window frames and the brick inserts glued into place, next I'm going to start gluing on the actual panes of, uh, of glass. And these are these very thin translucent, translucent sheets here. Can't really, hard to show it on camera because they're so clear, but it's kind of, you can see it in the reflection here. And each one of these has a little, um, part where you can pop it out for the window sash if you wanted to use that pop-out method. I'm going to leave these in place just like I left the sash frames in place. All I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of score these so that they easily um, kind of rotate inside of the, um, the larger pane. Uh, so it can kind of, so when I'm rotating the sash frames, it's also rotating the glass that's attached to it. So just have to be careful with that. They're very, very, very thin. Um, so it's really easy to uh, kind of mess that up. Uh, trust me, I uh, <laughs> know from experience on that when I went through a few of these. So luckily there's extras that I have laying around. Um, not all of my other wall modules received windows, so I had a few laying around. Uh, but just want to be careful of that. And then I'm going to use the same method of attaching it with this canopy glue and toothpick. Just kind of dab it around and gently place the uh, pane of glass on top of it, making sure that the inside sash... Uh, glass lines up with the sash frame. So just got to be careful there. Um, and then, uh, yeah, let's start gluing these up. Okay, so now the window panes have all been glued down and glue has dried. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate um, different colored panes of glass. So over the years, windows have been broken. The panes of glass have been replaced by other panes of glass. Sometimes they're taken from other parts of the warehouse or whatever. And so in a lot of cases, they're different colors based on whatever's available. Uh, most of the time, it's whatever's cheapest, right? So they're just panes of glass and... Uh, for the most part, companies will just replace them with whatever's available. So uh, to simulate that, there's a couple ways you can do it. One way is to leave those little inserts inside of the window frames, these little rectangular pieces, and you can paint those. Uh, but instead, what I'm going to do 
is I'm just gonna take some Crayola washable uh, markers from my kid's uh, coloring bin. And uh, these work really great. Um, I'm just going to color the panes of glass um, on the back side, so it's easier to follow the lines and, and get it right. That way you don't have to try to you know, get the marker between um, the different window frames exactly. You just kind of color over them. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to pick a couple of different colors and kind of randomly select a few, and then the, that step will be done. And I'm going to let this dry for a little while. Um, these do tend to rub off quite easily, uh, which is great if you make a mistake, but if you don't, well, then you got to redo it. Um, but after about an hour or so, they, it, it doesn't come off as easy, especially on this particular type of um, plastic material. So that's what I'll do next, and then, um, yeah, and then we'll get on to the next step. All right, so now that the Crayola markers have been applied, you can see it gives a pretty realistic effect. Very nice, pretty convincing. So uh, on to the next step, which is going to be starting to glue all this stuff together into the final form, adding some supports, and then eventually figuring out the base for the whole, the whole module so it can go on and off the layout uh, easily. Okay, so I just remembered one more thing that I wanted to do to these uh, wall modules that have windows before I actually glue them up. And that is to fix a little bit of an issue around the window frames where it meets the concrete wall. So eventually I want to light this building. And if you hold this wall module up to a light source, you'll be able to see light leaking through the edges between the window frame and the concrete portion of the wall. And so um, if it was you know dark and I had the building lit up, um, you'd potentially see light coming through those edges, which really wouldn't look all that great. And so uh, what I'm gonna do is put a little bead of acrylic paint, just any you know dark opaque paint really, around the edge of each one of these window uh, frames. And that'll both kind of seal it up a little bit more and prevent any light leaking from happening uh, you know, when you're looking at the building when it's all lit up. I mean, if you think about it in real life, if you've got um, light leaking through the edges of your window frames where it meets the concrete wall, well, you've got bigger problems than just light leaks, right? You've got moisture problems, heat problems, pest problems, all kinds of stuff. So it's just a little bit of attention to detail once I actually get this building lit up. I don't know when that's going to be, but I figured if I don't do it now, it's just going to be more of a pain in the butt to try to do that later on um, should it be an issue. So I'm going to put some paint around the edges, and then um, we'll actually get to gluing this thing up. Okay, so now that I've got all this done, now I'm just going to start gluing up all the pieces together, starting with this garage door. Now, unfortunately, um, I had recorded all of this, and I looked over, and it, my memory card was full. So, unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately uh, you won't get to see that part, but it's pretty simple. All I did was line it up, tack on some glue, uh, just taped it down so the glue has time to set so it doesn't move around. Um, and the other thing I'm going to start doing is... Once all, all the glue is dry, I'm going to start forming these wall modules together, um, gluing up the joints here on each of the four main walls. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, yep. And then um, getting those in place and getting ready to uh, assemble them all together. Um, but we'll get to that in just a second. I'm just going to let this glue tack up, and then uh, we'll come right back. Okay, so now it's time to start gluing these pieces together. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little bit of wood glue off to the side here. Take the little toothpick, or however you want to apply it. Just going to put a thin, thin bead on each of these joints. Don't need too much because wood glue holds pretty well. I mean, when it sets, it's stronger than the wood around it, so I'm not too worried there. Uh, just want to make sure it's not going to ooze out everywhere. 
And if a little bit gets on this side, once you're putting it together, it's not too big a deal because the pilasters are going to cover it anyway. I just want to make sure that it's not like a glob. Um, that way the pilasters might not set flush. So I'll take these two together. Make sure they are the right pieces going together in the right orientation. All right, so those are glued. See, a little bit came out in front, but that's okay. Uh, pilaster will cover that. And there we go. Now I just have to let it set. And then after that, I'll install some uh, supports along each of the joints for each of the um, wall modules that I'm putting together. There's going to be four sets of two, and then I'm going to have to glue them together at right angles after that. So uh, I'll let this sit, and then um, we'll get to installing the uh, extra support. Okay, so now that all the wall modules have been glued, the glue has set. Uh, now it's time to install a little bit of an extra support. This is just a strip of basswood, a sixteenth of an inch thick. And I trimmed it so that it goes from the top of the window frames down to the bottom of the last brick insert. So I left some room on top intentionally in case I ever wanted to install a roof. I could just um, I could have some play with how deep I want that roof from the top ledge of the building. Um, you're probably not going to be able to see the roof at all on my layout, um, simply because the fascia is going to come down enough so that you can't actually really see it unless you kind of stick your head in there. So I may not install a roof at all, but I want to leave some room there just in case, because once you glue it in here, it's going to be a pain in the butt to get it out. And I also left some room at the bottom as well. I'm going to be installing magnets in this particular structure so that when I take it on and off the layout, it'll basically snap back into place in the exact spot I want it. So I'm not exactly sure where I'm gonna put those magnets just yet, um, but I may do it in the center of each one of these wall module sets. So I'm just gonna leave some room there just in case. So I'm gonna get this glued up. I'm gonna take some wood glue, run a bead, and then uh, stick it on. Okay, so now that the supports have been glued up on the back, there's one more thing I'm going to do before I start assembling the modules together, and that's add the pilasters in the center of each one of these sets. Now, uh, I'm not going to install pilasters on the sides just yet because I need to get those attached together, you know, so they form the right angles that they need to form, and then we'll put pilasters over the joints there. But for now, I at least want to get these installed first. So that's, there's a large one here. And then there's a smaller one that sits on top of that, just like that, so it looks nice and uh, decorative. Now I'm going to glue these two together first, and then I'll glue it onto here. It's just a lot easier that way. And the other reason I want to do this before I assemble the building is that it's kind of a pain in the butt to glue these onto the building once it's all assembled. Uh, don't ask me how I know, uh, but I just found that this this method's just a lot easier. Try to get done as much as you can before you start assembling the whole thing, and you're just uh, the whole kit's going to go a lot faster that way. So I'm going to glue these together, glue it to here, do it to the other ones, and then we'll get on to the next step. Okay, almost set with all the pilasters in the middle of these modules here. Uh, just got some weights on this one. Uh, it was kind of curling up on one end, so I just wanted to make sure that does um, set flat. Um, now this particular module here, uh, I'm just going to leave it like this because this particular wall module is going to have kind of like a bridge that goes from this building over to another one that has I have not yet decided on what is it's going to be. Um, so I'm going to leave this just like this. I'm not even going to weather it or anything in this particular build at this point. Not until I figure out that bridge that goes between the two buildings and then I can go ahead and figure out what I'm going to do with this one. So for now, this is just going to be a support wall until I get that figured out at some point down the road. Uh, but for now, I just have to let this set up and then we can start uh, putting these all together. All right, so now it's time to start gluing these modules together. And basically, it's just going to be just a few right angles for this particular structure. So all I need to do is just make sure that I glue the right faces of each of these joints. So you can see here, I just want to make sure that this face gets glue, this face gets glue, so all the kind of ex extruding uh, bits here are going to get uh, a glue bead. And then I just want to make sure that once I get them together, I'm going to use a square to make sure that the angle is correct. It's perfect 90. And I'm going to use these uh, one, two, three blocks as weights just to kind of hold everything together so it doesn't fall over. Uh, so I'll 
what you need to do here is just grab some glue. Get the faces that will be touching. I'm not too worried about being too messy. Uh, they will be covered up by pilasters as well, but again, I don't want just globs all over the place. Yeah. All right, so now I'll just snap these together. heater just kicked on. That's fun. Alright, so all I have to do these together. I'm going to use my square here. Just make a perfect 90. Yeah, right there. You can also use the one, two, three blocks as squares as well because they are perfectly square. So you can do that as well, just like that. Um, but I'm going to use those behind the. Module there. I'm just going to check the angle up here. Looks good. All right, so I'm just going to leave that there. I'm going to let that set, and then we'll move on to some other pieces, and um, yep, should be good to go. Okay, so now that this section is now set up, I got the other uh, section over there setting up as well. Um, but before I attach these two right angle sections together, I do want to reinforce uh, some of the joints here. And this is where these, these carrier sheets come in handy, so they all have these right angles on them. So all I did was take one of them, and I clipped off just a right angle of it, of, of one of the corners and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to glue that in place right there and that'll help give it extra support um, along this joint as well and then I can attach the um, the other section once that's set up and then do that on the inside of of that one as well and that'll help just support the whole thing so that when I'm moving it on and off the layout like if I need to um, work on it or if I need to move the layout for whatever reason um, there's a better chance that it, it won't come apart. So I'll uh, go ahead and do that, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so now that I have the uh, building all glued together, the next step is to start adding the pilasters to the end pieces to hide the joints here. And the way it's, that's gonna work is there's gonna be two different size pieces, one that's a little bit shorter or smaller than the other one. And these will just go on like this, there. And then another one over top of that, just like that, give it that decorative uh, concrete corner. Now, I'm not going to glue these together first like I did these ones over here. Uh, and the reason for that is because if you glue it together like this, you're going to have a, a very flat edge here that kind of shows uh, the, how, the thickness of this particular piece. And it kind of looks a little weird when you have two of them butting up against each other. Um, it just doesn't quite look right to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to glue these on one at a time and overlap them. So this one will go on first, then we'll do one here, and then here, and then here. That way, the edge that's facing out will be kind of away from the viewer um, because it looks a little looks a little funny um, with this particular edge pointing towards where you're normally looking at it. Uh, this will make it just look a little nicer in my opinion. But um, yeah, it's pretty simple. Just going to glue these together and then uh, go around the whole building. And then after that, um, I'm gonna start planning out how to attach this to a base plate uh, so I can move it on and off really easily off the layout. Okay, so now this is all uh, built up. I've got all the bracing in place. I've got the pilasters done. Uh, now it's a matter of how I'm going to get this on and off the layout and be able to position it in the exact same spot every single time. And what I 
what I'm going to do for that is use these little neodymium magnets, which I used for the other structure, and it works really well. Uh, essentially what I did was I just took some pieces of carrier sheet, cut some pieces off. These are the same thickness as the magnets, so that worked out well. And it just drilled uh, an eighth inch hole um, in the center of this thing, because that's the, um, the diameter of the, uh, the magnet as well. And what I'll do is I'll end up gluing these to the sides of the modules like this. And then once I have those in place, I can mark where on the base plate that I'll be installing to drill some holes and put some magnets in there as well. And I'll be using five minute epoxy to hold it all together. Um, after that's done, I'll be putting another piece of the same size on top of these just for some added thickness so that these, uh, these little pieces don't snap off too easily. And that's what I did for the other structure. And like I said, it worked out well. Every time I put it back on the layout, it kind of snaps right back into place exactly where I want it. So that's what I'll be doing next. Um, I do need to cut the base plate. Um, so I have to do that as well. And once I have that done, then I can start lining these up, making some marks and drilling some more holes. Okay, so for the base, I have this eighth inch piece of plywood that I have left over from when I made the base for the other part of the structure, which worked well. And so what I'm gonna do is I've just set the building on here and I've got it positioned where I want it. And I'm just gonna make some marks here and here and here. And I'll trace those lines and I'll get it cut up on the table saw. And that'll provide me the base that I'll actually glue down to the layout. And then I can drill some holes in it to uh, mount the magnets. And then of course I'll put the magnets on this and then I'll have a nice, nice place to put the uh, structure once I take it on and off the layout. So I'll uh, take this off, cut those lines up, or I'm sorry, cut the, uh, cut the base up and then um, we'll get on to the next step. All right, so now I've got the base cut to the right shape. Now I can start putting the magnets inside of this structure here. And then once I have those aligned, I can drill holes down into the base to make sure I can put some magnets in here as well. So I'll do that next. Okay, so now I just need to whip up some five minute epoxy here. I'm just gonna squirt this out, get it mixed up. Don't need too much since the magnets are really small. And all I have to do is mix this up here, get it going. And then we're gonna put it inside these holes. Now what I did is I just put some masking tape on the other side so that the uh, epoxy doesn't go all the way through and bond this thing to my table. <laughs> so I'm just going to do a little bit of epoxy in there, a little bit in the other one, and then pop these magnets in. There's one. Two, and you want to make sure you get the right side, otherwise they will repel each other. So I, what I did was I took a little bit of a sharpie and I colored one side of each magnet so I know that when I'm putting these magnets into the holes, uh, I need to make sure that no two um, colored sides are the same. So a black side should not go to another black side, so I just need to make sure I flip it over when I put it in the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then... Um, yeah, we'll line it up with the uh, with the base, and we'll see how it worked out. Okay, so let's see how we did. Let's place this place this on the base. Ah, nice, very nice. Let's see how it lined up. As you can see, all the edges are perfectly aligned, so that I know when I put this on the layout, 
um, it'll be perfectly aligned uh, with the other building. So the next thing I need to do is because this is also going to act as the foundation for the building as well. Um, so I'm going to paint this the same color as the concrete color, and that was this uh, matte sand dollar. So I'm just going to take this outside, just spray the edges that are going to be visible, and then this portion will be done, and I can get it over to the layout and get it glued down. All right, so I've already marked on the layout in pencil uh, where this needs to go. So all I have to do is just basically glue it down, uh, and we're pretty much set. So uh, oh, still got these on here. Yeah, that's okay. All right, let's get this glued up. Yeah, we'll glue it like this. Just pop this on. Make sure the glue is spread underneath. I'm moving it around. Yep, and all I gotta do is just pop some weight on top of this, and we're basically good to go. So, just as a quick little demonstration here. All I have to do is pop this down like this. There we go. It's all lined up. So I'll just put some weight on this, let it dry, and then uh, we'll just do some finishing touches. All right, so one of the things for the uh, final touches here is to add a little bit of weathering powder. So I use these uh, Monroe Models uh, weathering powders. They work pretty good. Um, this one I'm just going to use some medium gray, same thing I did with the other one, I'm just going to dip it in the powder and then create streaks of grimy dirt down the sides of these pilasters and on the various places in the concrete to simulate, you know, just this grime that's, that's going down whenever it rains or whatever. Uh, same thing I did for the other one, I'm just going to match it and then after I'm done with that, uh, I'm just going to do one other thing and then we're basically done for now. Okay, so the building is basically complete. The one thing I did was I added some blue construction paper behind the glass, just so you don't see through it. Now eventually I'll plan, I do plan on lighting these structures, uh, but I'm not sure if I'm going to model the interior just yet. But I haven't decided what to do as far as the glass goes. Um, I may change up what's behind here, maybe use some, maybe some filtered uh, plastic or something like that. Haven't decided, but for now, just to match it with the other one, I just, uh, tape this blue construction paper behind it just so that you're not looking through the whole building and seeing what's behind the layout. So with that, uh, everything's all weathered up, ready to go. Just got to get it over onto the layout. All right, so got the structure in place. This uh, whole building is uh, looking really good, especially with this extension out here. I'm really happy with the way it's coming out. Uh, just a few more things I got to do. You know, I got to put in some asphalt and there may or may not uh, add some extra wall details, maybe some junction boxes or some conduit or something like that. But for now, it's basically done. Um, again, I'm not really going to worry about the roof for now because the fascia is going to come down to about here. So you really won't see it. So I don't think I really need to model that. And yeah, I'm really happy with these ITLA kits. They're really, really nice. They're easy to work with. And um, yeah, I think it looks pretty good. So hope you enjoyed it. Maybe got some tips or tricks out of it. And as always, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you next time.